Gentlemen, good morning to you both. Chilly one out there today. Bus stop uh, wind chill factor temperature at one point was 22 this morning. I love it. <laughs> I'm with John. I love it. That's scary. The thermometer temperature was 20 at my house this morning. 20. 20. Too low. Well, you're, you're yeah, um, that, uh, more rural. River, river yeah. effect. Yeah. River yeah. effect temperature. Yeah. River effect snow. Like lake effect. The uh, current... Delegate for the 99th is Wayne Clark. In fact, just uh, saw that uh, little sponsorship piece from Wayne there. But he is being challenged in the primary by our next guest, Mike Allers Jr., who would like to be the next delegate out of the 99th. And he joins us via telephone. Mike, good morning to you. Thanks so much for being with us. Hey, good morning, Rob. Good morning, guys. And it's good to uh, talk to a fellow Sicilian. Hey, sweet. It's, oh, my I'm, gosh. I'm going to guess with the last name of Allers that it's on your mother's side. No, so, yeah. Yes, my dad's German Irish. All right, though well, you get uh, my mom's name was Saltarelli, so you can't get more Sicilian than that. <laughs> no, you can't, man. That's beautiful. Do you know what 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 part of the uh, the island is she from? Uh, well, my my grandmother, my Nona, comes from around the Corleone region. So there we go, a little Godfather connection. Oh, I was just watching some Godfather last night. It was on uh, on on uh, like HBO or how something. many times Showtime? have you watched the Godfather? Uh, counting last night? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it's on, I got to watch. Yeah. I got it recorded too, it's just a in case. Experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of America's great movies ever made. It's a cinematic oh, masterpiece. I would agree. Right? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever watched it. <sighs> Excuse oh, me? Come on, Matt. That's I'm just thing. serious. Like, I don't know. I, you know. <laughs> Colin is advocating Matt, physical violence you, against you, Harvey. Matt, if you want a job. You huh? watch The Godfather. You gotta do it, baby. <laughs> it's the initiation. I can't, I can't believe you haven't watched The Godfather. How old are you? Undisclosed. <laughs> well, I'm 46. 46, I, and I've never seen Star Wars either. I knew now I've seen now I've seen Red Dawn about a thousand times. The the original one, not that junk remake. Okay, we can still, <laughs> we can still hang out with each other then. That's <laughs> not that. Change. And Days of Patrick Thunder. Swayze Days of the... Thunder. I watched a million times. Don't go tell kid. me Days of Thunder as opposed to The Godfather. Those are two different classifications yeah, of movies. Days of Thunder should not take. Well, look, the that, those yeah. resonate me with me more than The Godfather. I can understand that, but I'm talking about cinematic I'm work. I'm talking about cinematic work here and a wonderful life. Yeah. I, that's my. I love that movie. We should watch The Godfather on mute, and it wouldn't make a difference. It would. <laughs> Uh, Mike, let's talk about you as a candidate, and uh, sure. why you, why have you decided to jump into this race? You've, you've had some work as a reporter, and now you decided to get politically active. Take, take me through this process. Yes, so I'm an educator and conservative columnist, and you know I opine on where I think you know the conservative movement should be, and I wasn't seeing the action in Charleston on behalf of the Panhandle, so that's why I decided to jump in. Look, I come from a working class family. My dad was a cop turned educator. My mom works with children with special needs. I paid my way entirely through college without one student loan. I also previously worked in GOP politics from Virginia to Maryland on the local level in West Virginia. Um, but you know what? I, I felt like I needed to be involved. I, I live in a wonderful corner of the state. I live, I live right here in Charlestown. I wasn't born in West Virginia like my wife, but I got here as soon as I could uh, because it's the perfect place to raise a kid and, and grow your family. And it's a strong place with classic values. And I just felt like it wasn't being represented properly in Charleston, and there's a lot more to do on behalf of the Eastern Panhandle. Okay, now let's get into some specifics here. So Wayne is the incumbent, and you would like to replace yeah. him. So effectively, you're asking the voters to fire Wayne Clark. He's not doing the job Absolutely. properly, you say, fire him. And what has he not done specifically that you would like him to be fired for? Well, look, I mean, let's be paid for your segments. It's a little awkward, right? But look, uh, in my opinion, he is big solar owned. A lot of people are very upset about the Chinese manufactured solar factories that are going up all around Jefferson County. He was a big push for that. He's on the energy committee uh, in the House. And I just don't, that is not the best use of our resources. And it doesn't fix our problems. Look, West Virginia has a lot of problems. As great of a state as we are, we are 49th in education and in some studies business. Our schools in Jefferson County are failing. Right now, it's, it, I mean, I don't have to tell you guys, it's getting harder and harder to live in this region in the 99th district, and there's not enough jobs coming into the district. So a lot of us have to commute out, which is a recipe for disaster. And I believe a delegate needs to fight for this area. A delegate needs to bring back high paying jobs. A delegate needs to stop the Green New G Deal agenda going on in Charleston on our behalf. And look, Matt, I don't got to tell you this. We, we have a huge 
crime problem uh, stemming with drugs and human trafficking that are pouring in. I just don't see enough action being done. I've talked to Wayne before. Wayne's a nice guy, but I believe I would be a far more effective legislator and actually fight for this area. I want to ask you about the jobs problem, uh, because Mm -hmm. when Rockwool was brought into Jefferson County, I don't Mm -hmm. know if you were a resident of Jefferson County at that time or not, but uh, even so, I'm sure you've driven around the county and seen the signs about toxic rock wool, stop rock wool, you know, all the, all the mm-hmm. anti-rock wool signs. Uh, that, to me, created quite a strong anti-business environment and atmosphere in Jefferson County. So when there were folks who worked to bring jobs to Jefferson County, they apparently weren't the kind of jobs that's at least a vocal minority part or maybe a majority of, of Jefferson mm-hmm. Countyans want. They created quite an atmosphere that was anti-business. Now, it must have been more than just a minority because the incumbent at that time as the delegate was Riley Moore, who was in Mm -hmm. line to be the House, I believe the House Majority Leader, had he been reelected, and he was defeated by John Doyle, a very liberal Democrat, and John campaigned first, second, and third on Stop Rockwell, and he won. So that tells Mm -hmm. me that, at least of those who voted, a majority did not have a pro-business attitude toward Jefferson County? Well, look, I I believe the people decide, I think the people want quality jobs, and obviously Rockwell is kind of of a a tricky issue, right? It it had kind of a a sketchy reputation. So I think right now we have to focus on providing help for small businesses. There's a lot of red tape, believe it or not, in our little city of Charlestown that has to be slashed. Uh, But also when it comes to higher paying jobs for teachers, higher paying jobs for our cops or first responders. Those are the jobs that are service jobs that need to be boosted as well as our small business. So yes, I think we absolutely should lure more corporations here, but I think that's more of a state issue in regards to, I don't think the governor should have gotten as much pushback. I remember he wanted to slash the income tax entirely. That should be 100% done. And instead the House and the Senate, everybody went 10 rounds. And we settled on a compromise. The income tax should not exist in West Virginia. So I think that would be one strong step to bring bigger businesses in. But at the same time, businesses have to work for the people that are here. So a lot of people want to teach in the communities that they live in. A lot of police officers want to serve in the communities that they live in. But we also have to be competitive with Maryland and Virginia. And I think that's what we have to do. And that's what I want to help do as delegate. Matt Harvey. Hey, Mike. Good morning to you, sir. Hey, Matt. Um, so going back to the solar issue, there's a, you know, I, I hear uh, a lot of the issues and a lot of the concerns surrounding solar and, but how do you reconcile that with the farmer's property rights? Sure. Well, here's my thing, Matt. Obviously, if it's your property, you can do whatever you want with your property. Except solar. Your God-given right. Except well, solar. Here's the deal. Here's why I'm skeptical about solar, Matt. There are very large studies that say after two years, after two years, they basically don't work. They poison the ground and then they're stuck there for another 40. So it becomes an eyesore. So they can do that to their property. But I do believe that we have to be honest with what solar actually is. Also, Matt, I'm not a big fan. Anything that's Chinese and a lot of these solar panels are manufactured with Chinese parts manufactured in China. I think that's a big problem. So if you are going to do solar, I think you should be aware of the full effects on the county. And I think you should be aware that it's going to be Chinese manufacturing. I don't think we should give a dime to the Chinese. Well, is, isn't my cell phone Chinese? I have an Apple phone. Sure. Sure. Well, and they're making it in India. So we do have to switch over on that. But you know what? It, at the same time, our solar issues, a lot of people are upset. A lot of people are upset at ruining our rural beauty. And I think we need to, with these farms, we need to encourage and help our farmers cultivate our farmland because if we sell off all our farmland or encourage that process, we're going to lose our farms entirely. And I don't think people want that. Would would that require a subsidy? Perhaps. That could be considered on the table. But I, I honestly think we should be pivoting away from solar. It doesn't work. I don't know if it works or not. You know, I'm just making some of the uh, repeating some of the things that I'm hearing in the community that on both sides of this issue, it's that it, it, you know, Republicans 
profess to be for property rights until it's something that, that they don't like, and then it makes the whole party look bad. And, and I just was curious on your stances well, on that. It, but, it also looks bad, though, if Republicans support a green energy agenda and bash what the Democrats are doing nationally, but then implement the same things here in West Virginia. So that's also hypocritical as well. So we can't really be mad at AOC if we have a delegate that's pushing AOC's policies and incentivizing them instead of, hey, let's get together through subsidies or whatnot and save our farmland, see what else we can do, what else that can be incentivized to be used for as opposed to solar, but which think, a lot of people are upset about. Yes, sir. Hey, Mike, this is John Gilstrap. I, what gets hey. lost in this argument, it seems to me, is getting to Matt's argument about property rights. If you've got um, a, a generation who has inherited farmland after however many generations have been in the family and they don't want to farm, um, the mm -hmm. option between, you know, in terms of economic impact and, and environmental impact, between, you, know, you call it 100 acres, I'll pick a number, you've you got a 100 acres thing you, where you can build, you know, 200 homes on half acre lots mm -hmm. and you've got the impact on the schools and the roads and you know, all the, the sewerage and, and all of that. Or you have a rather, you know, I, I, I think they're ugly. Everybody thinks they're ugly. But in terms of the right of that generation of ownership to make that determination, it seems to me it belongs squarely with them, not with the government. Well, but you could also, again, they might think that it's a good investment as well. And people have to be aware that after two years, their value decreases. It starts to go down, and then they just sit there for 40 years. So they're actually ruining their property. So a lot of people need to be informed. It's not, their, it's not their property anymore. Once I cash, if I sell my property, once I cash the check, I've got all the value I'm going to get out of my property. It's somebody else's problem. Whoever purchases it, it's their problem whether or not they're going to get the economic return on it. They've made the bad bet. But the person, the seller, makes their profit, whether they build houses that do or don't sell or they do, they do solar farms that do or don't work. The seller gets to cash the check and then fund what's that's, important that's to true, him but that's why other options need to be incentivized over giving money to chinese products and promoting a green new deal in west virginia if we're cutting taxes so we, where are the subsidies coming from and where are the salaries for the police officers and such coming from well we have we have a reservoir we have a big beautiful uh surplus that i believe should be directed to police officers and we should boost pay across the state so that's a whole other issue that we can talk about however as Republicans, it does blow my mind. We should not be, even though it is property rights. Yes, I understand that. But there are other opportunities for this land that we should incentivize. We should not be backing an AOC Green New Deal style in West Virginia. You know, take AOC out of it. Take the Democratic Party out of it. Take, you know, all take the Green New Deal poisonous phrase out of it. It ultimately comes down to the individual property rights. And to be a conservative and to be a Republican, it seems to me that the, that's the basis of everything. That's the basis of the free, you yeah. know, well, the, the free I'm, market I'm an America system. I'm first conservative. Um, I am a Trump-style conservative. I am the only candidate in this race backed by veterans for Trump and America first. So when it comes to America first policies, I don't believe in selling out to Chinese energy or incentivizing our farmers to do the same, even if they don't want to farm anymore. You know, we have to, even in our schools, we have to bring back agriculture. We have to bring back farming. We have to maybe pass that land off or incentivize that land to be passed to other farmers. That should be the priority. Not, again, it's convenient to take AOC out of it because it protects those incumbents in West Virginia that want to keep promoting this ideology. That's why it's convenient to take AOC out of it, but you cannot separate the two. It's the same policies, just backed by Republicans in West Virginia. Uh, Mike, I, I, um, have you, I live beside an old apple orchard, and the, the fear that I have is all the arsenic that they use throughout the years in mm -hmm. in. To, that they sprayed on the trees and mm -hmm. and the farmers use a lot of chemicals mm -hmm. and pesticides. My, my house is built on an old apple and, orchard and and farming and so you know I, I don't I don't see how maybe you know I, I just don't this is an honest question like how sure and I love farms I, my parents have a farm um, how is how are solar panels 
more poisonous to the ground and to your neighbors than an active farm that's spraying chemicals into their field. Well, I mean, it also comes down to what's prettier to live next to. Yes, we could talk about regulations and safer farming policies, but would you rather live next to apples or ugly hunks of Chinese metal? I don't know. The choice seems pretty obvious to me. But it's my property. You don't get to make that cho- that, that choice. This is this is where yeah, can... I, I'm not arguing in favor. Sure. I'm no, not no, arguing. No. Actually, I'm just trying to to make sense of the argument. If we'll stipulate the solar panels won't work, we'll stipulate that solar panels are ugly. We also have to stipulate mm-hmm. that the land belongs to somebody who's not you, and belongs to somebody who's sure. not the government. That but does... that's why I believe all options should be presented, or other options should be incentivized, as opposed to pushing. Because solar is being pushed in our state. So if they feel like that's the hot new option, they're going to sell their property to that. But there should be other options presented because, again, and I don't have the exact scientific studies in front of me, but it has been shown that solar panels do depreciate. So they actually don't help with energy after two years. So then you just have panels on land and it's just sitting next to your property, which is actually in turn going to affect your property and bring down your property value. Because if you want to sell that, no one's going to want to live next to deactivated solar panels so it's about maintaining the beauty of west virginia and putting our people first and get... actually giving people the best options i think as a especially with our party and that's something we have to wrestle with whether you want old style conservatism or trumpism i think that's what we have to do but listen i'm america first conservative and this is what i believe and this is what i believe the people of the 99th district are passionate about well, Mike, I don't want Trumpism. If Trumpism is you telling me what I can sell, who I can sell my land to, after I've worked two or three jobs to try to pay my land off, so if, if that's your definition of Trumpism, then I don't want that. It, it, so it, si- it, sign it, me up for the anti-Trumpism if that means you can tell me what I can do with my land. Sure, it, that's that's not exactly what I mean. What I mean is we should not be incentivizing Chinese products, what these solar panels actually are, and we could have a whole other conversation whether they should be built in West Virginia or American solar, but those should be conditions. There needs to be conditions for this policy that does not work. And as conservatives, whether you are Trump, anti-Trump, whatever, you should not be defending a Green New Deal in West Virginia, period. Well, I'm not in favor of uh, subsidies of, of uh, products. That's a, a line that I don't like to cross. However, uh, moving along, because I don't yeah, want sure. to make it a 15-minute interview about no. AOC <laughs> well, that, and solar panels and whether that's or not. A, that, I mean, really, that's are, a local, that's yeah. a that's a county that's a, commission issue And that's right the now. source of the issues that are going <laughs> yeah, on right and, now. Sure. But, yeah, and, what is I, the county commission I, view well, on these things? Well, look, I, I, um, I, I'd like to ask Mike, because I know he's a school teacher, and I'd like to get mm-hmm. into some of his views and thoughts on the education system. Yeah. Ask a question, then. Mike, what are your views? <laughs> How would you fix education <laughs> in education West Virginia, system. Mike? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> well, look, this, for, as an educator, I've taught in Maryland and I've taught in Virginia, okay? I have not taught in West Virginia because, unfortunately, when I wanted, I was willing to take a pay cut to teach in the community where I live, where I love, um, they don't make it easy to hire people with out-of-state certificates, even though it says they have reciprocity. We, they, they actually do not. In Jefferson County, the central office clogs things along. So the first order of business, what I would do, central office has to be dismantled. This is more of a national issue, and I'll go from public education and move towards more options of school choice. The central bureaucracy of education is what's killing it, okay? A lot of these jobs the superintendents are hiring their friends, which are promoting liberal ideology that come from out of state, and they're making 90 grand a year, and that salary could be going towards more teachers. We have the largest teacher shortage in West Virginia um, from Martinsburg spanning into Jefferson County. That is a problem, and that is unsustainable. So teachers should be paid more, but it should be taken out of the central office positions that we allocate money for that are essentially useless. Another thing that I believe would give parents more choice because unfortunately, these school districts are picking curriculum from out of state. For example, in Jefferson County, we use a, uh, they use a curriculum called Amplify. It's Common Core based out of Brooklyn. Now, West Virginia isn't supposed to be a Common Core state, but we're letting these counties use Common Core curriculum. So it's actually defeating us in the end. Right now, our schools are only in Jefferson County, like 42% proficient in reading. 
37 or 39 percent proficient in math. These are horrible numbers. So what we need to do is we have to make it easier for people to hire. We have to have competitive salaries within the region because Loudoun's paying like over 70K. Maryland pays over 60. We have to be more competitive. I know locality pay has been held up, which is a huge issue. Um, and our superintendents need to be publicly elected. That would put more choice in the hands of the parents. And multiple states do that, from Florida to North Carolina. So those are some of the reforms that I want to introduce to fix our public education. Uh, when it comes to school choice, I am a strong believer in school choice. But we have to have the best choices. So right now that charter school isn't doing so great either. Their proficiency rates for reading, um, and it's Eastern Prep, reading and math are in the 30 percentile. That's awful. So we have to make sure that we have the best choices. And I know St. Joe's, a lot of people are going uh, to your neck of the woods, uh, to, to Martinsburg, to send their kids there. I would love to have a Catholic school. I am a devout Catholic. I'd love to have a Catholic school right here in Jefferson County of sending all our kids over there. So those are some of the reforms that I want to push for in education. It's a long haul, and I could go on and on about this, and I have to go into more specifics, but those are the first items to my agenda as delegate. Mike, I promise you we will have you on again, and we can spend more time on some other issues as well. Uh, I sure. want to give you the final word here because we have to end our segment in about a minute or so, so go right ahead and take the next minute to say what you would like to say but haven't had a chance to yet. Sure. Well, look, the three tenets of my platform, education reform, establishing a culture of life here in West Virginia, making it the best place to raise a family, and empowering the Eastern Panhandle economically. Look, I can't do this alone. I am up against the establishment, so please visit allersforwv.com. That's A-L-L-E-R-S for WV.com. Please support. Please chip in. Please ask me any questions that you would like. And guys, I'd love to come back on. And Matt, please watch The Godfather to me and Rob. Stewart. I know, yeah, right? Come on, dude. I know. I'm please, sorry. I'm sorry to let everybody down. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, that where I grew fair. up, I had a good excuse. You know, just availability what wasn't there. No we didn't have a, a blockbuster or anything like that. So, But now with, with streaming, Got no, no excuses. excuses yeah, none. Mike, thank you. We no enjoyed excuse. the conversation, man. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Thank you. We'll have you back again soon. That's Mike Allers, Jr., candidate for the 99th, a spot currently held by the incumbent, uh, Wayne Clark.